question is when they have accepted this God of yours, does this God address the social issues that are in the country? Does this God address rape? Does he address poverty? Does he address wealth distribution? Does he address industry? Does religion address infrastructure development? Does it address the social economic problems of the entire community? You will be shocked to your boots to discover that many of our religious systems have no interest whatsoever in the social issues of the community. More than they are interested in putting pies in the sky and pointing the African child to the sky, hoping that in prayer and in fasting problems will get resolved. I wish all these churches that are collecting money in Nigeria here, for example, the five top churches in the country that is redeemed and the other one, Christ Embassy, Christ Embassy which is run by Chris and Winners, Winners Chapel and uh, give me the redeemed Christ Embassy, Winners Chapel, which is the other one, Zion, whatever. House on the Rock. A house on the Rock and the last one. The five top and Joshua, the five top, the five top churches in the country, and Mountain of Fire, the five top, the five top churches in the country, the money that they raise in that in those five churches, it's equivalent to the national budget of the whole country. Now you didn't hear me. This is fact. Five churches, almost let me say it nicely, five church companies that are in Nigeria. The budget of the five churches is equivalent to the national budget of the whole country. I have a simple question for the five top pastors in the country. Why can't you put your monies together as five pastors? Since your budget is equivalent to the whole country and build roads, build hospitals, have solutions for electricity, have solutions for the Nigerian people. No, 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 no. It is the money that belongs to the Lord. We'll use this money for buying aeroplanes and investing it in other businesses that we cannot see on the ground. The same five top pastors are driving on top of top potholes. Alas, some of them are rich now. They no longer need to drive. They can fly over those potholes on their way to a service. They deliver a service and they disappear out of the country. I don't want to blame them. They've come up with a business model that is working. But demon number two that Africans need to start addressing issue of religion. Religion is beautiful when we pray and we fast. But when we pray and we fast, and after we fasted and prayed, and we are able to raise those billions of rands, of dollars, of pounds, can nairas, can we take those billions and plant them back into the communities where those monies have been found? Until Africa begins to look at solving its own problems, using its own religious forms and systems. If we can take the Jesus, take the Muhammad, take the Allah, take everybody else, and these Muhammads and Jesus and all of them can assist us to establish companies, to establish industries, to come up with medicines. I wish churches can build pharmaceuticals, run engineering companies, run top class universities, innovations, discoveries, Let's pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire, fire, fire. We don't need more fire. We need more solutions. So after we've gathered people into a religious organization, the question is what do we do with the support, with the power, with the finances, with the human resource that we have at our own disposal. Demon number one is the demon called the politician. Demon number two is the demon called religious leaders inclusive to that are muslim leaders baha'i baha'u'llah leaders christ scientology churches christian churches pentecostal churches catholic churches all these people who claim to be working with jesus working with allah they are not united in terms of solving african problems demon number three that we need to start dealing with as african people is the demon called foreign investors foreign investors and foreign aid that come to africa apparently with a nice white glove bringing to us help from across the oceans to help our own people to live better lives you go to the bronx you find people sleeping on the streets you go to china you find people who are living below the
the poverty margin. You go to Europe and in Canada, you find poverty is also amongst their own people. So what you call foreign donors is nothing called foreign donors at all. It's a bunch of capitalists who are coming here in the name of social welfare programs. And after they've given you the money for social welfare, they'll still consider that money as debt given to your own countries. We will not go very far as Africans living on handouts, living on handouts. It will not fly. I want to suggest that we organize ourselves as Africans into three main groups, three main groups. Those of you who are into economics, those of you who are into politics, those of you who are into industry, we need to start looking at how do we reform the entire political machinery so that we can establish indigenous governance systems to run the African people. Politics will not work for our people. We have already spent more than 60 to 8 years running around the political terrain and still Africa is the poorest of them all. In terms of resources, we are the richest of them all. Our solutions will not come from the political arena. We need to start saying no to politics. No to politics. No to slogans. Right now in Zimbabwe, people are busy shouting, hey, pe, pe, nangawa, pe, shamisa, pa, shamisa, pa, 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 what? After you've done all these slogans, on Monday they're supposed to be going and doing elections. To elect what? We're busy swapping foxes with hyenas and hoping that the sheep are going to be safe. It will not Caucasian religion or politics is not the solution to our racial, social, and world problems. The solution to our problems must be one which will work for us worldwide because our problems are worldwide. The reasonable and practical worldwide solution is mental liberation which produces Ethiopian creativeness the ability to create everything we need, and Ethiopian dependence, the ability to think independently and act independently of other races. <laughs>